In this recording, we look at how to apply Cramer's rule to solving a system of three equations in three unknowns. So, as written here, the unknowns are x, y and z, while the a1, b1, c1, k1, and all those other a's, b's, c's and k's, they are constants. And to use Cramer's rule, the solutions are of the form x equals delta 1 divided by delta, y equals delta 2 divided by delta, and z equals delta 3 divided by delta. And delta is basically a matrix determinant of the coefficients of the unknown x, y and z. So it's very important when using this rule to start by writing all of your unknowns on one side and the constants on the other. So you can see delta is just the coefficients of the unknowns as shown here and we work out the determinant of the resulting matrix. Now delta 1 is also a matrix determinant but here the constants on the right hand side of our system of equations go into the first column of delta 1 while the coefficients of the second and third unknowns respectively then go into the second and third columns of delta 1. And in working out delta 2, which relates to y, the unknown in the second column, start to notice a pattern here. The constants now go into the second column of the determinant used to calculate delta 2, and the coefficients of the unknown in the first column and the third column go into the first and third column of delta 2, respectively. And finally, similar pattern for delta 3, which you'll notice helps calculate the third unknown z. Uh, the constants now go into the third column of delta 3 and the coefficients a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3 go into the first and second columns of delta 3. So let's apply this to a particular example. We want to solve the following system of equations using Cramer's rule. And here you'll notice the unknowns are actually i1, i2, i3. And you'll notice the second and third equations don't have all three unknowns in them. So often to avoid careless errors it's good to start off by writing them out with all the unknowns in them. And you'll notice it's in the correct form already with constants on the right, unknowns on the left. So the first equation looks fine, i1 plus i2 plus i3 is 0. But I'll line the i1, i2s and i3s up with the second one so that that is written 6 i1 plus 0 i2 minus 8 i3 equals 24 and the third one is 0 i1 plus 7 i2 minus 2 i3 is equal to 9. So i1 being in the first column will relate to delta 1 so i1 will let be delta 1 divided by delta i2 in the second column will thus be delta 2 over delta and I3 will be delta 3 divided by delta. And working out delta, we said that that was the coefficients of the unknowns and the determinant of the matrix of those coefficients. So in the first row it was 1I1 plus 1I2 plus 1I3. Second row 6I1 plus 0I2 minus 8I3. Third row 0, 7 negative 2. And we'll assume here you know how to calculate determinants, but if not you might want to look at other recordings on Saris's rule for instance, or on other methods of calculation of these determinants. But this matrix determinant here actually works out to be 110. Similarly, finding delta 1. Now we said the pattern was that with this determinant, delta 1 relates to the unknown i1 in the first column, so our constants 0, 24 and 9 go into the first column and then the coefficients of i2 and i3 once again go into the second and third columns respectively. So that delta 1 will look like this and you can verify that determinant works out to be 144. Delta 2 now, how does that work? Well in this case the constants go into the second column or column 2 for delta 2, and then the coefficients of i1, 1, 1, 6, 0 are in the first column, coefficients of i3, 1, negative 8, negative 2 are now in the third column, and that determinant works out to be 78. 
And finally delta 3. Where do the constants go now? For delta 3 they go in column 3. So 0, 20, 4, 9 goes into the third column. First column is coefficients of I1, 1, 6, 0. Second column is coefficients of I2, 1, 0, 7. And that determinant in fact comes out to be negative 222. So summarising these were the values we found for delta, delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3. So it's now just a matter of saying I1 being delta 1 divided by delta is 144 divided by 110 which to two decimal places is 1.31. I2 is delta 2 which is 78 divided by delta of 110. So I2 to two decimal places is 0 0.71. And finally I3 being delta 3 which is negative 222 divided by delta being 110 is negative 2.02 .02, correct to two decimal places. So this is an example of applying Cramer's rule to solve the system of equations.